Hey gang, welcome back to Jude Eddie's Garage. It is a beautiful day in December in Georgia and I'm gonna take advantage of that. I need to do some work on my little Honda Fit that you see in the background. I've done some other videos on this car and I've been driving this car doing Uber Eats deliveries. And what does that mean? Well, it wears out certain things like your brake pads. So I need to replace the brake pads on that car and I've also noticed that the sway bar end links are making noise. So when I hit a bump, you hear a little clunk, clunk, clunk kind of sound. That's the sway bar end links that are worn out. So I'm going to replace those as well. Let me get set up and show you how I'm going to do this. So of course I'm going to jack the car up, put some jack stands underneath it, use a lug wrench to break the wheel lug nuts loose and get to, you know, get started on it. But I want to show you what I'm using. Currently I've ordered a set of brake pads these are Wagner QS. These are from Amazon. There's the part number. These are ceramic ZD62, ZD621. And the sway bar end links. Now what I did find from these when I ordered them, you can order one at a time or you can order a pair. I ordered a pair and they arrived separately. I don't know why, but they arrived separately. One came in an envelope. Inside was this packaging. Another one came in a, like a plastic bag, and this packaging was inside. When you pull these out, one thing I noticed, you probably can't see it right now until I open these up, this one has a thicker shaft on it than this one. Now, I don't think it's going to make any difference. You know, they're the same, same length, do the same thing, but I'm just pointing that out that there is a subtle difference between these two. So let me get the car up in the air, and we'll get started on it. Now that it's up in the air, I'll show you. Here's the sway bar end link, and listen. So every time I hit a bump, that's the sound it makes. Should be pretty simple. A nut here, nut there. I think there's a, uh, you could put an Allen wrench in the end of that if you need to. I'm gonna put some penetrating fluid on that and let it soak. Since this is such a small space on this car, I'm taking advantage of turning the wheel to the left so that the driver's side uh, caliper is more exposed. So what I need to do is break loose the bolt that holds the caliper. There's one here and one here. These are both 12 millimeter. And I usually use a mallet when I do this because I don't like to beat up on my hands. So I'm gonna break these two loose. Pull these bolts out, simple enough. Caliper should, should come off. And I set that up on top. Now I look and see these pads aren't terrible yet. They are definitely worn down, but they're not bad shape. In fact, they're pretty good. But since I've already opened this up and I have new pads, I'm gonna replace these. Now, just a note here, this one was against the piston and it also has the scraper, the little indicator that makes noise whenever the pads are wearing out. So remember that when you put this together. Another thing you wanna check is the guides that hold the caliper. These should move freely and these do, so I'm not gonna worry about those, but you can take these out and you have to be very careful you don't rip the boot um, and clean them up and re-grease them. But these things move nice, so I'm going to leave them alone. So here's a new pad for the inboard side. Again, it has that scraper on it. So I'll put that in. And the new one for the outboard. Put that one in. Now some kits will come with new uh, steel 
new stainless steel guides for the top ends and the bottom ends of the pads. You can replace those if you want or you can just clean up what you have. The next thing I will do is carefully compress the piston on the caliper. So to do that I have this tool, caliper compression tool. I'm going to take an old pad, put it in between and then tighten this up and compress this piston back into the caliper. Now when you do this, take your time, don't force it because the fluid has to move back up into the master cylinder and you may want to check that as well because if it has been serviced and fluid has been added over time that fluid is going to need to go somewhere and I can show you what I'm going to do with that in just a minute. So what happens as the fluid comes back up it wants to come out of this cap. So you have to be very careful with that and keep an eye on it. What I do is I have this little like generic syringe and I can put that in there, draw fluid out and put it into an old oil container. So I will repeat that as needed if that fluid gets too high. I don't think I'm going to have to do that on this car because I don't think anybody's added fluid uh, over the time that the pads have been wearing down. There's another way you can do the caliper compression and there's you know I'd, I've always done it where I put the fluid back into the master cylinder but you can also open up the bleeder there's a little valve on the back here right there and you can compress the piston and push out this old fluid and capture it with a hose into a, another oil can or something like that uh, either way will work but some people like to do it the other way so that it eliminates old fluid and you add new fluid on top of it. Not a bad idea. It helps keep the system clean. I'll continue compressing this and then put it back on this side. Now that the piston is all the way compressed, I'll remove the tool. Make sure nothing is interfering with the rubber um, boot that is on the piston. You know, you don't want it to have any kind of chunks sticking out. If you do, you can take a screwdriver and just gently go on the edge and it'll let air pressure out of there because sometimes air gets trapped inside. Now I'll just slip this back over the pads. Make sure those little the guides slide in. Put the bolts back in and tighten things back up. Now I don't know the exact torque spec on these bolts. I can tell you that I just make them tight. I don't try to snap them off or anything, but I do make them tight and that seems to work for me. That takes care of the brake pads. Now, while I have this turned out to the left, that's going to expose the bolts for the sway bar end links because this one is kind of hidden behind the caliper and the rotor. So I now have, let's see, check my size. The nut on, on these is a uh, 14 millimeter. So I'm going to hook up an air hose and see if I can't break those loose. Yep, that's what I thought. The shaft is going to want to turn because there's no torque on it. No and that one won't fit so I'm gonna to have to use a ratchet on the bottom one anyway so I need to get an Allen wrench for inside of that and uh, maybe have to use a wrench and take some time getting it apart I may have found another way to do this I got a pair of vice grips clamped onto the back side of that shaft almost there almost I'll get it. <laughs> so I had to be a little more aggressive and go with a bigger pair of vice grips. But now I want to show you something important. So if you look down the end of that shaft, you'll notice these ends are offset. One is twisted slightly more than the other. So you need to find out of your kit that you order, 
the one that matches that. If you use the wrong one, then they will not, they'll be faced a, the wrong direction. Just so you know, pick the right one. And I already know this, this one was in like this. This has the damage from the vice grip up at the top. Wouldn't hurt to put a little mark on these if you wanted to, just to verify. So, as a comparison, I put this one up, and that should be the exact same. And it is. And now it should be just a matter of putting it back in place. So, put that lower one in. You have to adjust that other one slightly to get it to line up. And of course those are bigger. In this case these are 16 millimeter. That'll work. Now that lower one I can't get the ratchet straight on or can't get the air gun straight on. Let's see if I have a short socket that'll fit. Awesome. Awesome. Good. So now, no more clunky noises. So basically I have to do the same thing the other side. Change out the brake pads, change out that sway bar end link, and that'll take care of the front end of this Honda, at least for now. Alright, I think that'll be the end of this video. Not that difficult to do. Take your time. You know, the sway bar end links took a little more effort than I had anticipated, but the car also has a little bit of rust on it. This car is not originally from Georgia. It is from Illinois, I believe. So, ten, you know, things tend to rust a little more up that way. But I was able to get it apart and replace the sway bar end links. And I know it's going to sound a whole lot better when I'm driving down the road and I hit, you know, some depression in the road and it's not going clunky, clunk, clunk. I hope you found this video useful. Maybe some information you can use on your car, doing maintenance on it to keep you from going to the repair shop and spending money you don't need to spend. But, uh... I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. And the sway bar and links. It is a beautiful... Ah, let's start that over. Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. It is a beautiful day in December. Nope. And the sway bar and links replaced. So I'm going to do both of those at the same time. I want you to. <clears throat> hey, gang. You hear that? <laughs> Somebody is photo or sound bombing my video. It is a beautiful day in Georgia. <laughs> okay. I hear you. That's a blue jay, I think. I think it's a blue jay. Where'd he go? There he is. There he is. Okay, Mr. Blue Jay. I hear you. All right.